thank you so much, all of you, for being here, to Representative Knorr and Senator Dietzik and all of the members of the state legislature for your leadership in St. Paul uh, to make headway on this issue. I'm grateful to you, uh, to, um, uh, to Abdi, thank you for sharing your personal story and helping us to remember that this is not a policy issue, this is a personal issue. So I'm grateful for you. Uh, to Shane Ray and Tom Grace, thank you so much for helping to host and organize us. Um, thank you to the, Min the Minneapolis Firefighters Museum, one of my favorite places. And I'm uh, grateful to be here with uh, members of the Minneapolis Fire Department and uh, Chief Friedel, who I believe is here somewhere, and, um, um, and to all of you. So I'm here today because I believe that everybody deserves a safe place to call home, including protection from the risks of a catastrophic fire like we saw at the Cedar High Apartments. The day before Thanksgiving 2019, it was a frigid day and fast moving flames moved up engulfing the upper floors of this high rise. And despite the best efforts, the best efforts of firefighters, we lost five souls that day, six altogether. And we have as we've heard so eloquently, a void that can't be filled, but a moment when we can take this tragic loss and turn it into good and turn it into action for the good of all of us. And that is what I think we need to be focused on here today. There are about 20,000 publicly supported apartments in Minnesota. About 10,000 of them are in greater Minnesota. And any unit that is built before 1992 isn't required to have a sprinkler system, um, which could literally mean the difference between life and death for the people who live in these buildings. Um, experts at the hearing, which I held this past week, to draw attention to this issue and to galvanize support for installing sprinklers in all publicly supported buildings so that everyone can be safe. Um, these experts, including the executive uh, director, the deputy executive director of Minneapolis Public Housing, told us that there are decades, decades of deferred maintenance in these public apartment buildings, including sprinklers in older buildings, but including many other safety and health hazards. And who is at risk here? Most of the people who live in publicly supported housing are elders. They are people who are living with disabilities. These are people who deserve a safe and decent place to live. And that is what we must commit ourselves to. This is what our work is. And this is what we are pushing for in Washington, D.C. with my great partner, Senator Klobuchar. I, mean, I am so grateful to what's happened in St. Paul, Senator Dietzik and Representative Knorr and all of you. Your leadership on this issue, along with the support of Governor Walls and the legislature, has created this commitment to make sure that we install sprinkler systems in our state's high-rise, publicly supported buildings um, by 2023. And Minneapolis has also made a commitment, which is very important, but we need the resources to get this done. And that is why Representative Omar and Senator Klobuchar and I are fighting hard to make sure that we have those resources um, for Minneapolis. But as has been said, it is not just Minneapolis where this need exists. And that is why in the Senate, I'm, I'm proud in partnership with my friend and colleague, Senator Klobuchar, to be working on the Public Housing Fire Safety Act, which would provide resources so that every publicly supported high-rise building that does not yet have sprinklers so that we could help local communities install sprinklers in those buildings so that more people can be safe. Our bill, our bill would provide funding for local pu public housing authorities to be able to get that work done. And we are also working with the Biden administration in the Build Back Better infrastructure bills that we are working so hard on this summer to make sure that there is support in there to address all of the deferred maintenance um, that is so desperately in need of attention, um, not only in Minnesota, but all across the country. So the time is now to take action on this vital health and safety, life and safety issue. And I hope that with all of our, all of our hard work, we will be sure that we will not see a fire again like we saw at Cedar High. Thank you so much, everyone.